Good evening. This is uh, the seven o'clock session for the Board of School Directors for Boyertown Area School District. I would like to ask all participants to mute their uh, audio. Those who are part of the public, uh, as in the previous meetings, the board president will identify the times that you will be able to speak. Uh, as with our normal board structure. Other than that, all of the times are reserved for board of school directors for staff to respond to their uh, questions. Uh, if you have not used Zoom before, if you uh, click on the icon that has two people side by side, either at the bottom or top of your menu, depending on where you've placed it, you can see the list of all the participants. Uh, you can raise your hand uh, as a participant to be called upon when the president uh, identifies the areas for the public to speak, at which time he will uh, identify the people in a particular order to speak. And the same rules will apply, which he will go over about 30 minutes, uh, three minutes per person for the public speaking session. Uh, also, you should see a note. If you don't, there is a notice on it indicating that this is being recorded. And so everything that is said and done here is actually being recorded uh, for the record, just as we record our normal board meetings. At this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. Foos. All right, <clears throat> lucky me. So we're gonna start with a roll call. So we'll do a roll call to make sure we have everybody in attendance. Right, Mr. Hemingway. Here. Ms. Deeroff. Here. Ms. Hogan. Lenore Lynn. Lynn. Is that it here? Present. Ms. Hogan. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. Denon. Here. Mr. Brophy. Here. Ms. Nyman. Here. Mrs. McWhorter. Here. Mr. Uptegro. Mr. Uptegro, I can see you, I think. You are muted. Here. Thank you. Mr. Foose. <laughs> I'm here. All right. So did I hear correctly? Do we have everybody in attendance? That's correct. Oops. Nice. All right. Uh, we will move next to Pledge of Allegiance and Moment of Silence. So if you have a flag, please uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So the first item that we have tonight is uh, regarding teleconferencing and virtual meetings. So for those joining us online who may not be able to read the print or those who might be calling in, I will read this to you. As a result of the current state of emergency associated with COVID-19, it is recommended that by majority vote and effective March 24th, 2020, the Board of School Directors suspend until the end of the COVID-19 emergency, the following provisions of policy 006.1. Those are provisions one and two, that no individual board member can use these procedures more than six times per school year from July 1st until June 30th. Not more than two board members can use these procedures at any meeting. 
if more than two board members request to use teleconferencing, the first two board members who make the request will be permitted to do so. Uh, for board members and all others in attendance at the meeting of the identity of the absent non-participating board members if known. The presiding officer shall then request the roll call. The participating board member upon responding affirmatively to the call shall be considered present for the meeting. Dr. Benton, would you like me to read this uh, uh, no. public comment portion here? Uh, first of all, you must take a vote, Mr. President, to act upon this to suspend uh, those portions you just referred to in policy 006.1. Right. So do we need a motion? Okay, uh, yes. We do. So I'm going to go to the participants pane. Um, you can audibly do a motion or raise your hand in the participants pane. I make a motion. That's that Mr. We... Hemingway. All right, so I, I heard uh, Ms. McWhorter and I had also seen Mr. Hemingway, so I'll, oh, I'll uh, speak about second. Mr. Hemingway first. So I'll, I'll have Mr. Hemingway uh, be an initial motion with a second from Ms. McWhorter. And so we'll move. Does anybody have any comments or questions on this topic? Uh, members of the public who are joining in would have an opportunity to comment at this time uh, on this because it, it, they wouldn't have had an opportunity to comment on it by, by virtue of this being placed first on the agenda. Right. So that uh, being said, that was our solicitor, uh, Mr. Sultanic. Yes. So if, any, if anybody on the line uh, would like to raise their hand and make any comments, we'll do that at this time. Uh, this being public members first, and then we'll move to board members. Mr. President, I expanded my screen and I see no hands raised. Yes, I'm seeing the same. Okay, so uh, we'll move to board member comment. Does anybody have any comment on this particular agenda item? I do. All right. It sounded like uh, Ms. Nyman. Ms. Nyman, do you have, would you like to go ahead and speak? Yeah, what happens if we have to use this more than six times? That's why the rule is being suspended. That portion is what's being suspended. <clears throat> yeah, the suspension is to allow us to, uh, to override those for the time being, given the emergency situation. That's not the way I was reading it, but okay. Does anybody have any other comments or questions for clarification? All right, seeing none at this time, we'll move to a roll call vote. Okay, and just a reminder, please remember to unmute yourself when you are registering your vote. Um, Mr. Hemingway? Yes. Ms. Deeroff? Um, is Ms. Deeroff still on the meeting? I said yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I yes. could not hear you. That's okay. Ms. Hogan? Sorry. That's okay. Yes. Great. Mrs. Denon? Yes. Mr. Brophy? Yes. Ms. Nyman? Yes. Mrs. McWhorter? Yes. Mr. Optigrove? Mr. Optigrove? Yes. Mr. Foos? Yes. Motion passed 9 0. All right, next we will move to announcement of previous executive session. The Board of School Directors met on the following dates in executive session to discuss items 
in the following areas. Uh, one of the February 25th, 2020 meeting was for 10 minutes and that was informational. And then March 24th uh, meeting earlier today, March 24th, 2020 was for 60 minutes and that was uh, pertaining to legal. The next item on the agenda is public comment period. This is public comment period number one. So are we, um, was there a specific sign up or are we soliciting uh, participation at this time? You would have to solicit participation with the raise of the hand or request, Mr. President, and remind them that it's for items that are, if I remember, this is the one on the agenda. Public comment period one, yes. Yes. And the three minute limit. Just gonna give folks a uh, minute to unmute or raise their hand if anybody is trying to do that. All right, at this time I have not seen any uh, hands raised so we will move ahead to the approval of minutes. So there are three different uh, minutes that need to be approved. Each one will be a vote, uh, a roll call vote independent of the others. So the first is for the approval of the minutes for February 25th, 2020. I'll there. move. All right, Denon moves. I'll second. And McWhorter seconds. We'll go ahead. Go ahead and roll call for the minutes. Unless anybody does anybody have any objections or clarifications needed on these minutes? All right, seeing and hearing none, we'll move to the vote. Okay. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. Yes. Ms. Hogan. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Mr. Brophy. Yes. Ms. Nyman. Abstain. Okay. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Mr. Updergrove. Mr. Updegrove, I did not hear your vote. Yes, it did not go off. Okay, uh, Mr. Poos. Yes. Motion passes eight with one instead, uh, one abstention. Now we have minutes from March 3rd, 2020. Would anybody like to move? to vote on these minutes. I'll move. All right, Ms. Hogan. I'll second. We need a second. Second, Ms. Denon. Does anybody have any comments, questions, or clarifications for the March 3rd minutes? All right, seeing and hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. Yes. Ms. Hogan. Yes. Ms. Denon. Yes. Mr. Brophy. Yes. Ms. Nyman. <laughs> Ms. Nyman, I, I'm sorry, I did not hear your response. I said I abstained again. Thank you. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Foose. Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one extension. All right, and we have one other set of minutes from March 10th, 2020. Do we have a motion? A motion. Second. Where are there motions? Second. And second from Ms. Hogan. Does anybody have any comments, questions, or clarifications on the March 10th minutes? All 
Great. Again, I'm not seeing any, not hearing any. We'll move to the vote. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. Yes. Ms. Hogan. Yes. Mrs. Stenen. Yes. Mr. Brophy. Yes. Ms. Nightman. I'm um, abstaining again. Thank you. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one abstention. All right, now we will move to report of the president. I don't have anything uh, for this evening. So we'll move ahead to the treasurer's report. This is the treasurer's report from February of 2020. Hmm. Uh, good evening. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I muted you. Okay. Uh, I would like to cover a few highlighted items for the February treasury report. The local revenue for February is approximately 500,000, which consists of approximately 273,000 from delinquent real estate taxes, tax collections, as well as the transfer tax. Approximately 125,000 was from earned income taxes. The, in regards to state revenue for February is approximately 2.6 million, which consists of approx approximately 2.2 million from the P Pennsylvania Department of Education, basic education. In reference to the federal revenues for February is approximately 47,000, which consists of approximately 30,000 from Title IIA and 11,000 from Title IV. And following up with the expenditures for February is approximately 9.1 million. Salary and benefits accounts for approximately 71% of expenditures at 6.5 million. Uh, that will conclude the highlights for the February Treasurer's Report. All right, are there any comments or questions on the Treasurer's Report? We're sorry, there's a, the recommended action is for us to approve as presented. So I, is there a motion for the Treasurer's Report? Dennis moves. I second. Right. Is Dennis, was that Ms. Hogan? Yes. Seconded. All right. So at this time, any comments or questions on the Treasurer's Report? All right. I'm not hearing any. I don't see any hands raised in the participation pane. So we will move to a vote. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. No. Thank you. Ms. Hogan. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Mr. Brophy. Yes. Ms. Nyman. Hang on the because I was locked out of my computer all weekend. Um, no. All right. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Motion passes 7-2. Okay, the next item on tonight's agenda is the secretary's report. No report. Okay, so now we'll move to the superintendent's report and the consent agenda. Mr. President, item uh, number 9A is the ratification of the postponement of the Bash Social Studies overnight trip, which was an international trip. We did submit that letter uh, to the company uh, in time to allow the students to select the options that best suited them that was presented to the board uh, to salvage what they could uh, from uh, the trip having to be uh, postponed. Uh, item number 9B is overnight trip. 
which is the board's practice to approve and ratify all overnight trips. Uh, the board of school directors are asking to approve the following overnight trip uh, for the purpose of 300 plus bash class of 2021 students uh, to travel to Orlando, Florida, uh, March 9, 9th through 13th, 2021. Given the current state of affairs, some may be wondering why this is on here, but these trips uh, typically need a, a year in advance approval for the process. So if someone's concerned why it's here, given the current circumstances. Uh, we're also asking uh, the board uh, school directors to approve uh, policies 220, the student expression and distribution and the posting of materials and policy 913, non-school organizations, groups and individuals, uh, effective March 24th, 2020, that was previous, previously presented to the board as part of a uh, committee uh, session. Uh, item 9D is that the Board of School Directors approved Kevin uh, Alvaser as a new census enumerator for the Douglas Township, Berks County. Uh, this uh, was a revision. Item 9E is uh, the 2021 Berks Korean Technical Center budget that was presented as part of the committee meeting. Uh, I believe, Mr. President, uh, Mrs. Um, Deroff may have requested item 9F be removed to itemize agenda. Is that correct, Ms. Deroff? Yes. So I will skip item 9F, Mr. President, that needs to be moved, and I will try to move it as soon as I get a chance. Uh, at this point in time, we ask uh, the board to approve as part of the consent agendas item 9A through E as part of the consent agenda. All right. <clears throat> So as this is consent, we'll look for a motion and a second and then move to vote. Hogan uh, motions. All right, Ms. Hogan motions. Do we have a second? Next, All right, uh, I heard two folks and uh, since Mr. Updegrove, I believe was trying to get in there, I'm gonna give it to him. Mr. Updegrove, you got the second. Thank you. So move to a vote. <clears throat> Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. <clears throat> I'm sorry, was that a yes? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Hogan. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Mr. Brophy. Yes. Ms. Nyman. I am going to abstain because I have not had a chance to look at it since I have not had access to my iPad. Okay. Mrs. Porter. Yes. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one abstention. All right. The next, uh, sorry, Dr. Bedden. Will we be moving that item to the itemized agenda then? It's already been moved. I just refreshed uh, the ladies moved it already. Okay, so next up is the solicitor's report. I have no report. Followed by the superintendent's report. Uh, you've got a lot of communication. That's all the reports I have, which you received in writing previously. Yes, there has been a lot of communication coming out of the district. We appreciate all that hard work given these uh, circumstances. So next is the itemized agenda. Items uh, 12A is the auditing services quote that was presented to the board and committee. Uh, that's presented in the February Finance and Facilities and Operations Committee is agreement with the district's uh, current audit firm, uh, which was uh, set to expire. Uh, we are requesting that the board of school directors approve the attached agreement uh, for auditing services for the 2020 to 2020 to 2021 fiscal year. 
uh, which will end on June 30th, 2021 at a cost of $22,675. And for 20, excuse me, for 1920 to 2020, auditing services is $27,175. And that the total estimated for the 2021 auditing services would be $30,275, consisting of $22,675 for the district auditing services and $1,900 for each of the four tax collectors. The total estimated cost uh, is the $30,375 requesting board approval to enter into the agreement uh, for auditing services as presented to uh, Barbicane, Thornton and Company, LLP of Wilmington, Delaware. All right, and then there's uh, that attachment. If anybody needs to go in and review that. Is there anything specific you want to mention about that before we uh, look for a motion? No, just it's attached for public view for anyone who's logged in, but we're just showing it um, as a document that's available for the public to review on their own. It's the same document that was at the committee meeting. Yeah, and this is uh, available, as you said, in the public content section as an attachment. Uh, so is there a motion for this item? Hogan motions. Is Hogan? Dan and second. A second from Ms. Stenon. All right, any comments or questions on uh, this? Yeah, Ms. Deeroff with a hand up, Mr. President. Yep, I see that, Ms. Deeroff. And I'm sure if I'm correct or not, but I figures on this. It says that they'll go with that hourly. And these are owned and get figures also says in the contract that cover it depends on who this as far as the cost. So sorry about Ms. that. Ms. off your phone is breaking up. I don't know if you can put your mouth closer to the mouthpiece. We can barely hear you. Okay. It depends on who the as far as the is that better? Yes. Hello? Yes, that's better yes. now. Yes. Okay. I I had it on the the it says Hello? Okay. I, I had it quantified that you just gave us were approximate. And I also said it depends on who did the audit. So this is what the last contract said. If all that was in the last contract, because I'm a little on a group to some places, it might cost this or so with a like this way. I um I don't know if other people could hear the question. I was unable to. The one question, the only thing I could pick up was she had a concern about there being an estimate of the cost. So that's one thing I could pick up. In so, so you might want to answer why the, the cost is an estimate. And um, I will say um, I did not question that. Um, 
So I would probably have to go back to Barbican and get an answer on that. It also says it depends who does the audit. As far as billing the hourly rate. Did our other contracts say that? I would have to look at the previous contract. Um, and I am sorry, I am not answer that question. Okay, that's all right. I do know that Miss uh, Deeroff, without having it in front of me, uh, just like a law firm, uh, audit firms have different members that have different hourly rates. So I'm going to. Correct. That's so what I'm, I'm saying. Yeah. They said it depends who does it. So the answer is our bill up or the lowest price person. Carol, I guess the question is there a deadline for this? Um, no, I would say if we need to get some additional information, I certainly could do that. Um, we do want to, this was something I just want to make sure that we weren't waiting until the last minute on. Um, so I certainly could go back and get answers to those questions and we could, um, I don't know if we want to table it for now and bring it back. I'd like to know what the last contract said, if, they, if it was that vague also. And, and I would have to look that up. I don't know. Off. Okay, so is there, um, there, there's some questions on this particular item. Is there uh, anybody else who's looking to table this or uh, there, there hasn't been a formal motion to table yet. I can move to table. I'll second that. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Hogan. So then um, I believe we need to uh, discuss that motion. Is that correct, Mr. Uh, Sultanic? That's correct. That is the motion that's on the table right now, whether we table the motion or not. Typically, there's no discussion on the table. So, a vote. We'll just go to a vote to table. That, that's what, as I heard, okay. it was a motion so we'll, to table and a second, no discussion. A yes vote means that the action would be tabled. A no vote means that the underlying motion will be left for board vote. Okay. So we'll. We'll move forward with a vote on the motion to table this item uh, while additional information is gathered. So we should have to do a roll call. Yep, Mr. Hemingway. Mr. Hemingway, I'm sorry, I did not hear your vote. No. Ms. Deeroff? Ms. Deeroff, I'm sorry, I did not hear your vote. Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mrs. Denon? No. Mr. Brophy? Yes. Ms. Nyman? Yes. Mrs. McWhorter? Yes. Mr. Updegrove? Yes. Mr. Foose? Yes. Motion to table passes 7 2. Item number All right. 12. Mr. President, were you going to say something? No, sorry. Go on. Item number 12 uh, B is the approval of the first American computer lease. Uh, this lease allows for us to move forward as discussed in the previous uh, earlier meeting, committee meeting, with uh, the purchase of the, the Chromebooks for our, our student use. All 
right? And this was uh, just discussed at our committee meeting. Uh, does any, I guess we need a, a motion in order to begin discussion on this. Motion in a second. <clears throat> McWhorter motions. Do we have Denon a second? second? All right, second from Ms. Denon. Any comments or questions on this item? I see two hands raised. Uh, looks like Ms. Steeroff, and then in the queue we'll have, I believe that's Mr. Brophy. I was trying to second. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Steeroff, did you have any comments or questions on this? I just saw your hand raised in the uh, participation pane. All right, looks like that's gone. All right, so if no one else has any comments or questions, hold on. we will Mr. Roll call Mr. Mr. President, can you hold on? Yes. We couldn't hear her. I, I think she's trying to say something now. I unmuted her. Okay, all right. Yes, Ms. Steeroff. <laughs> I, I said, I know we discussed this before. However, we did a lot of things before. Um, I would like to see since I, I don't believe we're going to be coming back to school the computers all these for months and I was wondering if we can extend that for a year. I, I can answer I believe that. The, I believe the question, oh sorry, go ahead. Uh, I believe she's asking if we can extend the computer lease a year because of the certain circumstances. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. question. Well, well, I mean, the, these leases, uh, this lease is for the July 1st uh, time frame. So this allows us to get the new computers for the upcoming uh, August, end of August time frame for incoming freshmen and incoming sixth graders, along with replacing uh, end of life or end of lease returns that we had to return back to HP. So I don't see a viable option to, to, to extend that another year. Even with the, well, I can't see how much the other ones are. They took that, even with the expensive ones that we're not going to be using now. Well, the one, now our current lease situation is a, is a fair market lease, which means at the end of the lease, we have the option to buy those computers or return them back to HP. And usually the value is about $160 per device. So um, the Chromebooks brand new are around $200. So it's, you know, and, and normally when we return these machines, value from all the damage that we have, if they're not in perfect brand new condition. So historically, it's been a lose-lose proposition for the district um, for as far as losing money to keep those devices. So we really don't have the option. We have to return them uh, or we have to buy them out and really there's no value in them at this point. If we're going to continue with Chromebooks, because the ones that have to go back are Windows devices, and with our new initiative to move forward with Chromebooks, uh, it wouldn't align. Okay, is this it? Well, okay, thank you. I, I can I can add on to that, Mrs. Deeroff, that um, the amount of money we're spending this year, uh, as compared to last year, is is substantially less. All right, are there any other comments or questions on this topic? All right, I'm not seeing any, so we'll move this to roll call vote. Mr. Hemingway? Yes. Ms. Deeroff? Yes. Mrs. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mrs. Denon? Yes. Mr. Brophy? Yes. Ms. Hyman? I'm going to abstain because I have not had a chance to look over any of this without having my iPad in operation. Mrs. McWhorter? Yes. Mr. Updegrove?
Yes. Mr. Foose? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one abstention. Item 12D, uh, item 12D is a ratification of compensating employee groups that were not covered. D Dr. Bedden, I think we, we missed one. Um, oh yes, I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, yeah. Item 12C is approve the purchase by the district of the computer equipment subject of the proposal in the amount of $489,997.60 through CoStar's purchasing contract or a cooperative. Administration okay, there, we're also there are a couple of attachments uh, for administrative content, which Anything I believe are up on the screen here. Carol or Bob? I'm having a hard time reading that. I'm just asking, do you have anything specific you want to highlight? Um, the only thing I want to highlight is um, I, I want to express that uh, again, this this price we're we're you know we're taking the incoming sixth grade and eighth grade sixth and eighth ninth grade computers, but we're also transitioning uh, existing computers to Chromebooks. So the cost would have been over one point one million dollars, but we're substantially less this year with going with continuing on with the Chromebook initiative. All right. I believe uh, we're at the point to call for a motion. I give a motion. All right. Mr. Up to Grove motions. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second, Ms. Hogan. We'll call the, or sorry, any comments or questions on this? Not seeing any right now in the participants' pain. So we'll move to roll call vote. Mr. Hemingway? Yes. Ms. Deeroff? Yes. yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mrs. Denon? Yes. Sorry, Mrs. Denon, I did not hear you. Mrs. Denon, your uh, microphone is on and then you keep turning it on. Yes. Mr. Brophy. Yes. Ms. Nyman. I'm sorry, Ms. Nyman, I did not hear you. I'm going to abstain again because my iPad has not been in use. I've been locked out. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Motion, motion passes 8-0 with one abstention. The item 12D, item 12D is a ratification of the compensate, of compensating employee groups that were not covered under Pennsylvania Code Section 1153 during the emergency uh, school closure from March 13th through March 27th. Uh, additionally, uh, this item also requested um, ratification, but also for the school board to provide guidance and direction on the continued compensation of medical benefits for the above reference employees. This item was uh, recently just updated uh, and discussed in executive session via legal counsel. Uh, I do believe that there will be uh, potential for scheduling another uh, session with legal counsel regarding some additional information that was shared uh, today uh, about 
the new legislation. Uh, but at this time, we are asking for uh, the administration recommends the board ratify the compensation with employee groups uh, reference from the March 13th through the 27th uh, 2020 time period. And then further action would be in compliance with whatever the recommendation going forward from uh, school uh, board attorney uh, based on the board's guidance once they speak to the attorney again. We have a motion. I'll move. Open up. Move from Denon. Second from McWhorter. Is there any comments or questions on this item? Okay. I'm not seeing any. So we will move to a roll call vote. Mr. Hemingway? Yes. Ms. Deeroff? I'm sorry, Ms. Deeroff, was that a yes? Ms. Gerard, that sounded like a yes. Is that correct? Yes, she said yes. Okay. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mrs. Denon? Yes. Mr. Brophy? Yes. Ms. Nyman? I am going to abstain because I was not privileged to that executive session tonight because my iPad was not working. Mrs. McWhorter? Yes. Mr. Updegrove? Yes. Mr. Foos? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one abstention. Item number 12E um, is uh, the administration's recommend recommendation for the elimination of the identified uh, Act 93 positions. In the fall of 2018, there's a recommendation of board approved for the creation of two Act 93 positions in lieu of filling a vacated 12 month assistant principal position who transitioned to the elementary uh, uh, principal in the district. The two Act 93 positions, a 10 month assistant principal and a 10 month dean of students were created to support the Boyertown Area High School administration with increase in student enrollment. Uh, to be fiscally responsible, in June 2019, we recommended the board approve the 10-month AP position and a 10-month dean position. At this time, we're recommending that those, that 10-month assistant principal position and a 10-month dean position um, be eliminated as part of the Act uh, 93 uh, employee group. All right, do we have any, uh, do we have a motion for this? McWhorter moves. Right, Ten moves. seconds. Ten in seconds. Do we have any comments or questions on this item? Participants, quick. All right. Seeing and hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Mr. Hemingway? Yes. Ms. Deeroff? Ms. Deeroff, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. No, 
Ms. Duarte, we can't hear you. Can you raise your hand signal if it's a yes? Right now, Carol, you'd have to mark it as an abstention because we can't verify it. Okay. Yes, she raised it. It's a yes. Thank you, Ms. Darrow. Thank you. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mrs. Denon? Yes. Mr. Brophy? Yes. Ms. Nyman? Again, I'm going to abstain because I haven't had the use of my iPad. Mrs. McWhorter? Yes. Mr. Optigrove? Dr. Grove? Yes. Mr. Foos? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one abstention. Item number 12F uh, at the, is approval of the Supportive Supervisory Group Plan at the February 25th, 25th, 2020 board meeting, the Board of School Directors approved the uh, reinstatement and the reconstitution of Supportive Supervisory Group. Uh, the board also received another briefing and update uh, at the committee meeting held tonight. The following positions are part of that group. Uh, three dean, deans of social emotional and academic learning, the supervisor of student services, school safety coordinator slash school police officer, human resource managers, and communications marketing specialists. Uh, at this time, administration recommends approval of the supportive supervisor group plan. Would anybody like to raise a motion? Okay, motions. Ms. Hogan, do you have a second? I'll second. Mr. Hemingway seconds. Any comments or questions? All right, seeing and hearing none. Move to roll call vote. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. Ms. Deeroff, we may need you to raise your hand again if it's a yes. Okay. At this time, Mrs. Deeroff, if it's a no, can you raise your hand? She's a no. Okay. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mrs. Denon? Yes. Mr. Brophy? Yes. Ms. Nyman? Again, I'm going to have to vote as an abstention because I cannot get into my iPad or could not get into my iPad up until earlier this evening. Mrs. McWhorter? Yes. Mr. Updegrove? I'm trying to, yes. Mr. Foos? Yes. Motion passes 7-1 with one abstention. Item number 12C uh, is uh, personnel recommendations. At this time, we like to uh, present to the board uh, one will classify retirement, uh, one resignation. Uh, recognize Dr. Kim, who was had an opportunity to move to a larger district and thank her for her service as a chief human resource officer. Uh, the ap appointments of one uh, supportive supervisory a group member, two classified members, uh, substitutes as listed, you have a change of employment status for three professional, four supportive supervisory personnel, and six classified employees. We're also presenting for FMLA leave of absences, five professional staff, and uncompensated leave for three uh, classified staff. We recommend the board of approval 
approve the personal actions as recommend the Board of School Directors approve the personal actions as presented. Okay, can we get a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Hemingway, do we have a second? I'll second that. McWhorter. McWhorter seconds. Any comments or questions on this personnel item? All right. Seeing and hearing none, we'll move to a vote. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Ms. Duroff. Ms. Durek, we may. You raise your hand. If, it sounds like a no, Ms. Durek. Can you confirm by raising your hand if it's no? It's a no. Okay. Ms. Hogan. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Mr. Brophy. Yes. Ms. Nyman. Again, I'll abstain for all the reasons I've said before. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Motion passes 7-1 with one abstention. That ends my report, Mr. President. All right. So the next thing we have on tonight's agenda is old business. No old business. Moving along, we are now at public comment period number two. So if anybody dialed in from the public wishes to speak at this time, um, any topics related to the school district in general, uh, we have 30 minutes allotted, three minutes per person. If you could uh, raise your hand in the Zoom app or if you're dialed in, make acknowledgement of your interest in speaking. I see no hand raised, Mr. President. All right, we will move along to board comment. Are there any board comments? And I similarly ask that uh, board members raise their hand and we'll try to go in order. So we have, it looks like uh, Mr. Brophy and Ms. Deeroff, um, Ms. Hogan. You also so have we'll, Mr. Updegrove raising his hand visually. Brandon put me okay. in the queue. All right, so here's a lot of people want to go. Uh, we're going to go with, let me write these down real quick. We're going to go with Mr. Brophy followed by Ms. Deeroff, Ms. Hogan, Ms. Denon, and Ms. Nyman. Did you and say Ms. Updegrove? Uh, okay, I guess uh, oh, sorry. first I'd like to thank Mrs. Mr. Pitts. Mr. Updegrove as well. Okay, I'd like to thank Mrs. Pitts for continuing to look into the uh, refinancing issue that she sent out uh, some information today. It's great. Uh, anytime we can get some money saved, it's a good thing to do. So I'd like to thank her for that. Uh, uh, we didn't talk about lawn, the lawn care tonight. And the only question I have on that when I looked at it was, do we have an opt out on that for, un for unsatisfactory service? Uh, sometime I can get an answer to that question would be great before we sign anything. And my final one is uh, we voted to move the, uh, the overseas trip uh, to later in the year. Uh, my only question on that is, now with the all the travel bans, uh, is there a possibility we can, that the students can get all their money back? And would that option be, you know, be something that should be presented to them? I don't know the answer. I don't know if anybody can get it, but I thought maybe with the, with the uh, everything being completely shut down, that they might be able to get get all their money back, even if they don't have the insurance. And I Mr. Think Brophy, was, uh, yeah. it was it was not later in the year, uh, this school year. The options were beyond. Uh, later than this school year. It actually yeah, was, 20, was 20, 2021. I'm doing this from memory, but I know it was uh, late. Didn't have, did not have to be done this year. 
Yeah, but they were looking toward August for that as the latest because mm -hmm. we have seniors involved in this. And there's like 27 seniors, and at some point this might not work for them. And that's why I'm concerned that maybe if we can get them all their money back due to this, it's something that should be looked into and offered to them if possible. That's all I'm looking for on that. Okay, and Dr. Foley is on, and I think he heard, and he we can send out something in the weekly report. That's great. Thank you very much. That's all. If you want me to, I can give you a, a couple pieces of information on that. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, we did work with the company, and even at the money that they're getting back with the insurance, it's still more than they would have gotten from the insurance, and that's still the person who's only getting everything back except for the $800. Mm -hmm. um, we did talk with them about that, especially with the travel bans and stuff like that. And yeah. they are going to increase the voucher possibility for students to use them all the way through 2022, December okay. of 2022. Okay. Um, so they could just get a full voucher back, which would give them their hundred percent of their money in that voucher. But if they choose to get the refund in cash, then it will still be less either the 800 or the $600 based upon the, um, uh, the monies that they, they paid in. Okay. Okay, thank you. I, I just want to make sure there was some other, if we looked into that to see if there's some, something else we could get them, that's all. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Your mic is muted, Mr. President. Who's next? Sorry. Uh, so just uh, as a reminder for the folks that are that did raise their hand um, to go ahead and put them down because I've recorded them and now I can add anyone who raises their hand afterwards. Uh, so next we have Ms. Deeroff. Mr. Off, it looks like you are on mute at the moment. If you don't mind, I'll uh, move to Ms. Hogan and Mr. Off, I'll keep you on the list if uh, we're able to get you off mute then. Ms. Hogan, do you want to go right now? Sure. Um, I just wanted to thank the administration for working so hard. I know this is difficult times. I want to thank all of the employees who are leaving their homes and going into work and everyone who's working from home. I know as a parent, I really appreciate everyone's effort. So that's really all I wanted to say. Thank you. All right, thank you. And let's check on, looks like Ms. Deeroff uh, was able to come off mute, so we'll go to her next. Can you hear me? Uh, I, I heard that, hear but it is, um, it, it's not, the sound is not coming through great, but if you want to try to get your comment out. Okay, there's a couple I had. I wanted to know about the food items that were in cafeteria. Did we, did, did we uh, give those to a food or are we going to? And do we have to get keep getting deliveries of food with the contracts we have? Hello? Carol, could you process it was about yeah, food? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure yeah. if I heard the exact question, but um uh, I, I talked to some. Um we are um, feeding all of our students. We have a waiver that we can feed any student um, 18 and under. Um, and we have been doing that since Wednesday of last week, every day. Uh, we will get reimbursed because of the waiver. Um, and um, we are working on a plan for the next two weeks um, while we have the continuation of closing where we will do multiple meals. Um, three meals on a Monday and two meals on a Thursday. That information will go out later this week. Um, we are using a lot of the food. I think I heard some food questions in there. Um, 
that we have on stock. We were able to use that. I did talk to Mrs. Clinton briefly this afternoon, and she did say she was going to have an additional delivery. I think it is of milk on this Friday. So I do hope that answers your questions, uh, Sister Roth. Okay, just if I can real quick. Oh. Uh, the photocopy machine that we have on the frame right on this, we get an extension of fine those. And I was also calling asking about the garbage because we're not going to have the pickup fees we have. We can rehab the company that knows. And transfer taxes. I don't think that money's going to come in like it had been, and also uh, the school taxes. We're going to have a problem with those also. Hello. Carol, you're muted. I am. I'm sorry. Um, I couldn't hear all of the questions. Um, I, I know I heard one about garbage. Um, and I would say we do still have our custodial staff is working at the building. So I would believe that we would have much less trash than we would normally have. But I don't think that we would have zero. Um, maybe that is something. Um, I, I know that when um, Mr. Sultanic gave us a brief outline of the proposed legislation that we have the ability through that legislation to renegotiate some contracts. I don't know if that would include our garbage contract. And I think I heard you ask about copy services as well. I do believe those are on a monthly lease, um, but I would have to check into the terms of that. Um, and school taxes, um, as long as my, uh, and I'm not sure if I could hear the exact question, um, as long as my staff has the ability to be identified as essential um, and to come in and process um, what they need to do, we should be able to process tax bills. Um, we do process them at the Berks County Intermediate Unit. Um, one of the other things, you notice that we had the updated um, census taker um, and they are taking they are bringing us reports and my staff that is one of the things that they are able to work on remotely is um, making the changes from the census so i hope i got most of those Okay, I, I'm not sure I heard all of that, um, but I did hear you say you're concerned about the budget, and I will say. I'm sorry, I, I we were talking at the same time. Can you say that again, Mrs. Duroff? I throw everything out that you would email tomorrow. I am sorry, I didn't get any of that. Although I will address uh, I concerned about the budget, which I am as well. Um, when I made the projections, the most recent projection that I made, I did bring back um, earned income quite a bit. Um, and I know that we'll need to um, address that in the 2021 budget as well. And I do believe earlier, Mrs. Duroff said something about real estate transfer tax. I would agree that's another area that we'll need to look at. Um, I think to look at interest earnings in next year's budget as well. So I hope I got addressed most of those questions. Yes, and I think I think I heard uh, Ms. Stiroff say that she would um, send an email, which I would suggest to anybody on the call, um, if you don't feel that your question was adequately answered or you don't, uh, you weren't able to express it fully and clearly because of the technology um, issues that we're trying to cope with. Uh, certainly send an email in. We'll try to get um, 
answers to anything that wasn't addressed during this meeting. Uh, next in the queue, I have, and again, if anyone wants uh, to speak again, please just raise your hand in the participant pane and I'll add you back to the list. So at this point, I'll move to uh, Ms. Denon. Thanks, Mr. Foose. Um, I just wanted to um, thank Dr. Bedden for his for his um, leadership and all of the administration for the hard work they're doing. This is something that no one has ever been through um, before. And I really appreciate the updates that we're getting from administration, especially the articles about what other states are doing and um, timely information about the uh, things that are going on legislatively, both at the state level and the national level. It's been really very, very helpful. I can just go to my school board emails and, and um, go to that one, one place and get all the information. So I just really appreciate it. And I have been talking to a lot of other board members, um, some of them who I'm on the BCIU board with, and they are not um, getting as much information as we are getting. So I really appreciate everything that the administration is doing. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. All right. <clears throat> Next in the queue, I have Ms. Nyman. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. First of all, I want to say this is the worst experience I've had. I can't understand anybody. I have not been able to get on, so I am hoping Dr. Bedden is going to have somebody work with me to get this set up properly if this is what we are going to be using. I am very, I don't know how to say it, angry. You had an executive session where I could not link in because I was not set up. So I have no idea what was said in that meeting. And I am a board member. And to have a meeting start at 4 o'clock when I am working till 3.30 is totally, totally wrong. I deserve to be included in those meetings. And I had to come home today and try to get my iPad set up. I did not make it. And my iPad is still not set up right that I can be on. So I have no idea what went on in executive session. And here I am on my phone tonight, and I can't understand half of what is going on. It is very, very sad. All right, thank you, Ms. Snyman. Do you have any other comments or questions at this time? All right, I believe next in the queue is Mr. Uptegrove. Until the end, uh, the lost or broken units brought back. Who's responsible for those? Did you hear me? I think I heard, I think the second half of your question was heard, but not the first half. Well, the, the lost or broken computers that are brought back, who is responsible for those? The students or the school? This might be a question for Mr. Ionelli. Is he still on? That's what I'm, I'm looking. <clears throat> well, he's not here, but what has happened, and I don't know Mr. Stout is on. Is Mr. Stout still here? Um, yeah, I'm on. I can speak to that. Um, typically, the uh, we do a self-insurance policy with our students as far as collection goes for uh, the amount of 
of cost it would be to insure the computer. So there's a purpose behind that. And then also there is a potential bill that would go out to students if they do not self-insure and um, they would get billed for that. The actual attempt to collect those funds is not always the easiest, but we do have some things in place. Okay, that's what I was wondering. That's all I have, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, I uh, see, looks like Mr. Hemingway has his hand up, so we'll go to him next. Yeah, I would just like to take a, a moment to say thank you to administration and uh, also to some other board members who have helped me with some of the technical difficulties I've had this week. Uh, when I wasn't able to get on to certain devices, uh, phone call worked, I got a call back right away. Um, I appreciate that we had a test run earlier in the week just to make sure that everybody was connected. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone for providing you know, all the information, keeping me in the loop and uh, answering all calls that I had when I reached out, when I needed assistance. And again, I just, uh, you know, we're all in this together and thank you very much. All right, thank you. And I saw one other hand come up, Ms. McWhorter. Yeah, uh, again, I just wanted to thank the, everyone, not just the administration, but the parents, the students, uh, the school board, this has been a very difficult time uh, mentally and, I, and probably physically for most everybody who is uh, staying at home. Um, probably just a couple of things on today's meeting. Dr. Bedden, it might be good if you muted your um, microphone when you weren't speaking because it seemed like there was some echoing and I'm not sure if it was yours or somebody else's. Um, and I appreciate everybody giving this technology a try to do this so that we can stay safe and wash your hands and stay healthy. Thank you. All right, I don't see any, anyone else uh, looking to get in the queue. So I'll just, uh, I wanna reiterate some of what's already been said, but uh, obviously the situation's not ideal. Um, it's much better when we can meet face to face, be in a room uh, with one another. Uh, there are some clear disadvantages to, to this way of working, but um, I appreciate everybody's flexibility. Uh, we're trying to stay on top of communication the best that we can and be responsive. Uh, the district and the administration is uh, dealing with a lot of issues um, that is consuming all their time. I mean, just pretty matter of factly, any hour of the day that I speak with a member of the administration to try to see how they're going, where they're at, uh, there's a chance that they're in the middle of something because from five in the morning till 10, 11 at night, uh, there are, there's information that they're getting from the federal government, the state government, uh, local entities that they're trying to evaluate process and um, determine what that means for us as a district while also making decisions about how best to educate um, as many students as, as we can uh, in a fair and equitable way during these very unprecedented times. Uh, it's, a, it's certainly a challenge and as board members, um, I appreciate that uh, we're being flexible and understanding in our approach to that. Um, we'll try to get any kinks um, from this meeting worked out. We did fix a couple from the earlier meeting so now, and I'm sure that there will be more, and we will continue to try to smooth those out, smooth those out as we go forward. Um, but I, I, I really do want to give kudos to uh, the not just the administration, but um, all district staff, uh, teachers, and and every every aide, any any person who's played a role in uh, the the lives of our students, because um, our students right now miss coming in and having that interaction, but. Um, I think that they also are getting a lot of uh, good feedback from from the school, and uh, and there's there's a lot more to be figured out over the next few weeks. So, uh, thank you to everybody. That is all I have. The board comments. Um, we have our upcoming meeting dates. Uh, the district calendar is, I, I want to say, up to date. But um, 
please stay tuned as with everything. Um, this is all kind of in flux and fluid at the moment. So uh, also thank you to everyone who, who dialed on tonight. Um, hopefully this went okay for you. Uh, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Good order motions. Order motions. Do I have a second? Ten in seconds. Ten in seconds. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Take care, everyone.